Okay, thank you for coming to the Wind Dragon page. This is going to be a video on the history of Bachme White Eyebrow System. Um, it is known for defeating the Shaolin Temple, um, and a lot of people do not know this history of Chinese Kung Fu, Chinese martial arts history, so I want to share it uh, to those who have never heard of it before. Um, I have witnessed the art uh, many years ago, and um, I always, I've always had a respect for the Bachme System. I'm not a... Uh, expert at it. I, it's not something I really train in, but I am aware of, of the system and I have been exposed to a little bit of it. And I have learned very, very, very little bit of it. Um, but anyways, this is the history of the Bachme versus uh, the Shaolin Temple. Okay. Okay. Bachme, Chinese pinyin, Baime, or Paime in Cantonese, or Bachme, literally, literally meaning white eyebrow. Bakme comes from the Cantonese pronunciation, is said to have been one of the legendary five elders, survivors of the destruction of the Shaolin Monastery by the Qing Dynasty 1644 to 1912, who according to some accounts betrayed Shaolin Temple to the imperial government. He shares his name with the South Chinese martial art attributed to him. Some masters teach Bakme as a Shaolin art, but this is inaccurate. Historically, Bakme was cast out of the Shaolin order and removed from many Chinese historical texts. Bakme as a style of martial art can widely vary depending on lineage and teacher. Bakme contains classical leopard and snake kung fu techniques and can have many characteristics of southern mantis kung fu. Bakme has been fictionalized in Hong Kong films such as Executioners from Shaolin, 1977, Abbot of Shaolin, 1979, and Clan of the White Lotus, 1980. Bakme is better known in the West as Pai Mei, played by Gordon Liu in the Hollywood film Kill Bill, Volume 2, 2004. Historical Bai Mei, or Bakme, academic research on Bakme is not referenced, is not referenced and doesn't give insight on the martial arts style with the same moniker. Research is non-conclusive on martial arts as all information and political division is usually discounted. Bakme as a martial art is just now seeing a larger public awareness. One historical area rarely mentioned is the Hakka Chinese and their connection to Bakme. The Hakka teach Bakme very rarely due to its infamous role in Shaolin history and the general focus on close quarter combat. The Hakka considered the Bakme style to be in a completely different category when compared in a technical fashion to other lineage lines. In 2012, an academic research was done on the historical origins of the style of Bai Mei, Bai Mei Chuan, Pak Mei Quen or White Eyebrow Fist, and the validity of the monk Bai Mei using the resources of the U.S. University professors of Chinese and Buddhist studies as well as Mr. Xiang Feng of the Yimei Shan Museum in Sichuan, China. The earliest reference to the monk Bai Mei as an actual person comes in the Wuxia novel called Yun Yan Qin, A Thousand Years Green or Evergreen, as being one of the five ancestors who survived the sacking of the Shaolin Temple circa 1727 by the Qing army. Yet, there are many problems with this source as follows. Uh, number one, it is a work of fiction anonymous and has no historical basis whatsoever. Number two, there is no historical evidence to suggest that Shaolin Temple of Henan Province was ever attacked and destroyed by the Qing armies, but this is not unexpected considering the destruction of many martial texts in Shaolin history. The Bai Mei legend, a mysterious monk originating from the Shaolin Temple with white eyebrows and awesome power, was in all probability employed to create a lineage with the said temple. Hakka Bakme carries on the legend and evidences with the technical skill of the practitioners. So on one hand, uh, give me a second, on one hand, people are questioning the history, but on the other hand, um, there is evidence and proof by the actual level of skill of the practitioners. So, you know, uh, just throw that in there. The eyebrows of Bakme are merely a physical characteristic. Many of the Hakka use Bakme in various military skirmishes. Throughout history, and this is very important as martial arts used for warfare, generally have to be effective for a culture to survive. Guanghui means vast benevolence and is a typical Buddhist nomination 
for either a monk or a temple. Indeed, there are several temples throughout China that bear this name. Yet on searching through the surviving gazetteers for Mount Emei, there is no mention of a monk named Guanghui. There is no material evidence to suggest that Guanghui came from Emei Shan. All we have is the oral tradition from Zhang, Li, Zhang Lichuan or Cheng Lai Chuan, that is that his Shifu Zhu Fayun came from a temple in Sichuan province. Zhu Fayun Fa in the context of a monk's name means Buddhist teachings and Yun means cloud. The Chinese character Zhu formed part of the ancient word Qiang Zhu meaning India. Zhu Fayun is said to have been a Buddhist monk from Emei Shan in Sichuan province on a pilgrimage to the Guangzhou Bright Phileo Monastery in Guangzhou. This is entirely plausible as the Guangxiao Monastery is one of the oldest temples in South China as well as being one of the most influential Buddhist shrines. During his stay in Guangxiao, Zhu Faiyun committed to teach Zhang Lichuan or Cheng Lai Chuan the Bai Mei Arts. Zhang Lichuan 1882 to 1964 It would seem that Zhang Lichuan was essentially an honest man with respect to his martial arts. He learned three different styles from three different masters prior to having met Zhu Faiyun. He firmly acknowledges each of his former Shifu by name and honors them by keeping at least one of their forms in the Pakme syllabus. At a later stage in his career, Zhang Li Chuan formulated several of his own forms, including Tuo Tiao, tu, sorry, Tuo Tiao, Tuo, Tuo Tiao Chuan, Cantonese for Tit Til Quen, the Simen Bagua, Simon Bagua, which he openly professed were his own works. It would appear contradictory to suggest that such a man who has been totally honest about the origins of all that he has learned would deny the existence of one teacher, or indeed invent a fictional character to disguise his own works when he has already affirmed creating several of his own. All the complementary, all, sorry, all the supplementary forms in the Pakme syllabus, whatever the original style, fall under the collective classification of Nan Chuan, Southern Fist, or more precisely, Dong Jiang Chuan, East River Fist. A common denominator to all these forms is that they are divided into two parts, the second being a repetition of the first, performed in the opposite direction. They also have numerous stances and techniques in common and share similar terminology and methodology. According, there have been attempts to suggest that Bai Mei Chuan forms part of these Southern or Hakka styles, or indeed as a concoction of these various styles. The original Hakka Bak Mei style had a different set of forms, martial maxims, and training methods, uh, and, and, and considered the forms of other lineage to be completely inaccurate as well as misleading to many practitioners. Hakka Bak Mei has only recently been exposed to public scrutiny and can seem like a completely separate martial art upon study. Yet none of the four Bai Mei original forms are performed in two halves, nor do they share any stances or techniques with the supplementary forms. The Hakka lineage of Bak Mei has 12 official forms and many theorize that these forms are the historical core of Bak Mei. Hakka Bak Mei involves a leopard hand position within the salute, similarly the Bai Mei opening salutation, Wu Hu Si Hai, in Cantonese, Ung Wai Sai Hoi, is not found in any other style apart from Bai Mei derivatives. Bak Mei according to the lineage of Nam An, Ming China, which had been weakened by corruption and internal rebellion, was overtaken by the Manchu people in, in 1644. Hong Mei, Red Eyebrows, abbot of the, Sha, of the Southern Shaolin Temple, died during this time and his position was passed into, onto Qi Tian Su, known by his Dharma name Ji Sin Sim Si, Chan Teacher Perfection. That's what Ji Sin Sim Si means, Chan Teacher Perfection. Another master named Chu Long Tu Yen did not accept this. He believed the Ming had become corrupt and would rather serve the Manchu Qing dynasty. In 1647, Manchu forces attacked the Southern Shaolin Temple in Guangzhou, Fujian. Only five masters managed to escape and since then became known as the Five Elders. Chi Tian Su, one of the Five Elders, founded another temple at Nine Lotus Mountain in Fujian where the survivors sought shelter. Chu Long Tu Yen refused to provide his real name for fear of retribution against his family and students. In case they survived, the abbot then christened him Bak Mei, White Eyebrows. 
According to some stories, Bakme betrayed the Ming by taking information about their plot against the invaders to the Shunzi Emperor, then returned with information about the Manchu attack plan to, to the Shaolin. After the temple was destroyed, Bakme and, and Feng Tak, creator of the Bakfu Pai, left the temple on separate paths in order to study Taoism. Bakme trained an anti-imperial attack force, but following capture of the force by the Imperials, was forced to teach and lead 50,000 Imperial troops in the second destruction of the Shaolin Temple to prevent those captured with him from being tortured and killed. There, Bakme slew the invincible Shaolin leader Ji Sin in single combat by breaking his neck. Wow. He claimed he did this to prevent the massacre of the monks in the temple by the troops who followed him. While he is often portrayed as a traitor, Bakme's actions were undertaken, including the destruction of the, of the temple within, with the intention of preventing harm to those he had chosen to follow him. It is possible that if Bakme had not aided the imperial forces, his followers would have been tortured to death. Bakme, according to the lineage of Jack Consu, during the reign of the Kangxi Emperor 1662 to 1722, the warriors of Shi Lufan rebellion were so feared that the two ministers whom Kangxi ordered to quell the revolt fled China rather than face the mercilessness of the Shi Lu warriors, which often involving beheading in 1673 over a period of three months, 128 monks of the, Sha of the southern Shaolin Temple defeated the, 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 the Shi Lu war army without suffering a single casualty. Wow. However, by doing so, they had made enemies of some Qing officers who were embarrassed by how easily the Shaolin monks had, had succeeded where they had failed. Rumors soon began to spread about the threat posed by a power so great that if defeated, the entire Shilu army would, with a force of only 128 monks. This campaign of innuendo was wasted on the Kangxi emperor who remained grateful to the monks, but the rumors had their intended effect on his successor. The Yongsheng Emperor, 1722 to 1735, he began his reign by plotting the temple's destruction and was said to have secretly recruited a band of renegade warrior monks from Tibet to carry out his plan. In 1723, on the sixth day of the first new moon of the lunar calendar, a former Shaolin disciple named Mang Mingyi aided Qing forces to launch a sneak attack of the southern Shaolin temple. They began the assault by bombarding the, the largely wooden monastery with a relentless diluge of, of burning arrows. Between the surprise attack, the fire, and the overwhelming number of Qing soldiers, 110 out of the 128 monks were killed that day. The Great Shaolin Purge took 70 days as Qing forces hunted down the 18 survivors. The surviving monks of Shaolin inflicted massive casualties on their Qing, pursuers, but in the end their numbers were too great. Soon only five remained. Their identities vary, but they are generally accepted as the following. Number one, the Chan monk, Ji Sin. Number two, the Shaolin abbess, Eng Mui Sai Tai. Number three, the Chan monk, Bak Mei. Number four, the Taoist Feng Do Duk, who later created the, the white tiger style. And number, uh, sorry, I think it's Number five, the unshaved lay disciple Mui Hen. After two years of running and hiding from the Qing army, these fugitives of the cloth regrouped at Mount Emei in Sichuan province as one of the sacred mountains of China. Mount Emei was home to about 70 monasteries and temples where the five clerics could blend in easily. It was decided that Bak Mei would infiltrate the Qing court as a spy, while the others traveled throughout China to establish an alliance of anti-Qing rebels. The more Bak Mei learned, the more he realized that his allies' efforts would never be enough to overthrow the Qing. He decided to give up on the rebellion, which was seen as a betrayal, death. Bak Mei was eventually killed, but accounts disagree on whether he was poisoned or slain. Over the years, the rebels sought to punish Bak Mei for his defection. Almost all who made an attempt on his life ended up dead at Bakme's hands. This included Ji Sin and Mui Hin's son, Feng Sai Yuk, Mui Hin's grandson, according to other sources, whom Bakme had known since Sai Yuk was a small boy. Some say he was fin finally killed by the combined effort of Hong Man Ting 
and Wu Ah, who, 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 who employed the crane style and the tiger style to avenge the burning of the Shaolin Temple and the death of their Sigong, teacher's teacher, the venerable Ji Sin, the abbot whom Pak Mei is said to have killed in, du in a duel during the burning of the temple. Bak, the Bak Mei Pai. The Bak Mei Pai traces its origin to Mount Imei, where Bak Mei is said to have transmitted the art up to the Chan Zen master Guang Wei, who then passed it on to Juk Fat Wan. Bak Mei's fighting style makes use of the four principles of floating, fo, sinking, chum, swallowing, tun, and spitting, to. Common in the southern Chinese martial arts, it is characterized by its emphasis on powerful close-range hand strikes. Bak Mei strikes are usually executed in conjunction with intercepting and jamming the opponent's strike. Unique to Bak Mei is its classification of the following six Ni Jin powers, Fu thrusting and Chum sinking, Tan springing, Fa neutralizing, Tung and Chuk. Chuck, sorry. Bak Mei can produce effects on the nervous system that benefit the practitioner if taught correctly. Bak Mei emphasis, emphasizes the techniques of leopard kung fu and its strikes are executed with fluidity and power via Fa Jin. Additionally, it contains numerous dim mock applications. These applications are comparable with anatomy focused arts such as Tui Ti and Chin Na. Some of these applications involving throwing, takedowns, and restraining techniques. Um, I'm going to stop right there. There's a lot more information on the Bak Mei system, um, but that's just an incredible history in the Chinese martial arts that a lot of people do not know about. People talk about the white eyebrow monk, but they don't really research the history. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the history of Bakme uh, versus Shaolin Temple.